We often see wars playing out on our television screens without much thought as to who exactly is covering these deadly conflicts. Award-winning journalist Jane Ferguson has been on the front lines of nearly every major conflict of the past 15 years. Her new book, No Ordinary Assignment, a memoir, gives us an in-depth look at some of the consequences of war and how they can take a toll on the reporters and people on the ground. And we're very lucky that Jane is now joining us. Jane, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, John. Um, you've been to Ukraine several times since the, the war began in 2022. How does that differ from your other experiences? Well, the war in Ukraine is a war right on the edge of Europe. Um, and also for my generation of war reporters, it's important to remember this is a conventional war. Those of us who covered post 9-11 conflicts, the Arab Spring, we were so used to covering insurgencies. Yes. You know, whether you were embedded or working with government militaries or you were studying and spending time with insurgencies themselves. This is the first time we've got two mighty armies facing off. And that is why you know, some of the reporting has been literally deadly and there's been quite a high number of casualties of Ukrainian and international reporters. Is that because the insurgencies are more scrappy, they're trying just to find weapons and material, whereas in a conventional you've got huge massive tanks and planes. And, and what that means is that, you know, the firepower is such that there isn't really a, a technical front line. I mean, right. you are moving towards what you are hoping is the front line, but effectively you're entering into a space whereby you're within reach of uh, Russian artillery fire and uh, and that is why it's extraordinarily dangerous this is a, a difficult say well speaking of being in reach of russian artillery fire what do you make of the, the prigozhin news i think you know it would be extraordinary if it was a coincidence that this was uh, some sort of accident of course i think no one was terribly surprised i think it would be a mistake to swing wildly from, you know, the, the initial reports whenever Putin seemingly allowed Prigozhin to move around freely. Yes. There were, you know, there was some speculation, is this a, an indicator that Putin is weakened? Um, you know, there will be likely more speculation now. Does this mean Putin is strengthening his position? You know, Putin was always going to respond. There was no way you know, Prigozhin was going to be able to get away uh, with his mutiny. I think it's important to see it also within the context, though, of a, a less than successful uh, Ukrainian counteroffensive this summer, which has frustrated many efforts, those who had hoped they would be able to push back the Russian forces, but the Russian defenses in Ukraine have remained extremely strong. So, so to that extent, Putin uh, has really managed to, to hold on uh, within the Ukraine so far. I want to switch to, to Kabul. You were one of the last Western journalists there. Explain what that was like in 2021. Well, we've just had uh, recently the two-year anniversary of the fall of Kabul. I mean, I've covered revolutions, insurgencies, civil wars. I've covered the overthrow of a government, but I've never in my life, and I write about this a lot in the book, uh, you know, it really ends in Kabul where uh, the, the government collapses. I've never seen a state as it is collapse, you know, to suddenly step out into the street that, two hours earlier was bustling, and it is now empty. You know, military vehicles have their doors wide open, uniforms are abandoned in the street, government buildings have been emptied. Jane, what did you learn about the work that you do when you had a minute to stop and think about it? It was a real privilege to take time out and think about it, um, to really think about what it is to tell stories. I struggle a lot in the book, I realized, looking back, that I had struggled a lot with, you know, the sense of purpose. As a conflict reporter, we're so often in the worst day of someone's life. Yeah. We're so often in places where we are surrounded by people who are helping, doctors and pilots and nurses and water engineers and Red Cross volunteers and whatnot. And so it, it, looking back, it, there was this sense of struggle to somehow do work that has a sense of purpose to it. You know, am I in any way contributing uh, to, to trying to, to make the world in some way a better place, however naive that sounds? Am I, am I using my life's work in a good way? Am I being of help to people? Yeah. And looking back, I, I, I conclude at the end that I hope that I tried, because what matters is the effort, right? Yeah. The effort is the intention to go somewhere and to tell stories in a way that that really has authenticity and humanity to it is, is a small contribution. 
Yeah, and the answer to your question, by the way, is yes. You are helping the world, and you're helping those of us who don't go there connect with the humanity of what's happening there to understand it because it's a part of our world. Um, you don't have to respond to that. I just want to thank you for that work. But finally, you're teaching a class at Princeton on what it's like to be a war correspondent. I am. Let's say I'm about to be a war correspondent. What do I need to know? You need to know that you come from a, you will be joining a very long and proud line of men and women who've been doing this for decades and decades and who leave an incredible legacy for us to learn from. And so looking back at the greats um, and that those who have done it before can really inform, you know, when we look at the history, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly of it all, um, of, of war reporting, when it comes to conflicts today and in the future, I, I try to teach by, by showing what has been done well before. I would love to take the class. They're very lucky, Jane Ferguson. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.